12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Tuesday, the 24th. Happy Tuesday. Happy Thanksgiving week. Yay, it's almost here. It is almost here. Mm -hmm. uh, for, I forget, dogs or cats at your house? One dog. One dog. One big dog, Gordo. Gordo, that's right, Gordo. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Because Gordo and my lab, Truman, have not yet met. No, they haven't. we got to get I, those I, kids together. I think they would get along just just. Do you fine. guys <laughs> slip a little table scrap to Gordo now and then? Yes, uh, a lot, actually, um, and maybe a little too much. Uh, in fact, last week he was a little sick because mm -hmm. uh, I think we weren't, uh, Luis and I, my husband, we weren't communicating. And so I was giving him a little treat here, and Luis was giving him a little treat there, and then our, oh. our daughter was giving a little treat, and so ah. he, he kind of got sick. Gordo's so. the happiest dog on the planet until well, he got a tummy ache, right? Yeah, and now yeah. we're being very strict with him, and this article kind of follows that. It does. There's mm -hmm. an article on KSAT.com. Here's a list of holiday foods not safe to give your pet. So you say no to the following items. Yeah, no poultry bones. Definitely no poultry bones. No onions, garlic, leek scallions, chives, or shallots are otherwise known as alliums. And no xylitol, which is an artificial sweetener found in certain candies. A lot of candies. Mm -hmm. uh, also, and this one is kind of uh, one we talk about all the time, chocolate. Yeah, yeah, we know, we know that. I actually knew, uh, I think it was my sister-in-law's dogs. I don't mean to call you out, but I think the, her dog had M&Ms and survived. Oh, but yeah, but that's not good for Survived the chocolate poison. Yes. Foods with alcohol, so uh, yeah, avoid anything like that, including, I guess, baked goods maybe that may have. What, oh, that's What true. foods have alcohol in them, though? Um, I, yeah, I guess some baked, baked goods. I don't know. Um, it's, it's not like we're going to give Gordo a rum and coke <laughs> or anything like that. <laughs> that's true. There goes the beer <laughs> idea, Truman. Um, and then raw dough, don't, do, don't give that to your pet either. No, I don't think you're supposed to give that to your child or yourself as well. Okay. But anyway, uh, raisins. That was also, also on our perennial list. Mm -hmm. Here's one I didn't know, and I'm guilty. Uh, turkey skin. I didn't know about that either. I yeah. just assumed it was part of the meal and it would be all right. So that's a new one for me as well. Let's breeze through these last mm -hmm. ones real quick. Nuts and milk. Mm -hmm. uh, nutmeg, which is that spice for a lot of holiday dishes. And, and grapes. And grapes, grapes. yeah. So mm -hmm. grapes, raisins, chocolate were already on the list. Maybe you didn't know about some of the others. Here are the dishes that are, are safe for your pets. Turkey, mashed potatoes, cranberry sauce. I didn't know about cranberry sauce. Yeah. Uh, they, gonna... And apparently mac and cheese. It's safe. It's safe. Is, are, where's David Sears? He just went out on the corner. <laughs> He, he doesn't think that mac and cheese is a part of a Thanksgiving meal, but now we can tell him not only is it part of a Thanksgiving meal, David, it's safe our pets, to our give pets to can your have animals. it. Hey, do your horses <laughs> like mac and cheese, David? No. <laughs> <laughs> also, green beans, carrots, peas, and bananas, all that stuff is safe together. And trust me, if you mashed all that together in a bowl, your dog would love you forever Aww. and ever. Take care of your pets this Thanksgiving. And for now, let's look at today's Night at Nine. The federal government has recognized Joe Biden as the apparent winner of the presidential election, formally starting the transition of power. The Biden team will now have access to more office space and federal resources to help ease the transition. President-elect Joe Biden is expected to officially begin naming cabinet nominees today. The president-elect is reportedly interested in creating a cabinet that's diverse in age, gender, ideology, and race. Five states in the District of Columbia are scheduled to certify their election results today. All states must certify before the Electoral College meets on December 14th, and any challenge to the results must be resolved by December 8th. A forecasting model from Washington University in St. Louis predicts the U.S. will pass 20 million coronavirus cases before the end of January. That's nearly double the current number of cases. The rise in COVID cases continues for Bear County. More than 700 new cases reported yesterday, and the county's positivity rate now sits at 10%. Former New York City Mayor David Dinkins has passed away at the age of 93. Dinkins became the city's first black mayor in 1990, and according to NYPD, he died in his apartment after reporting difficulty breathing. President Donald Trump set to carry out a holiday tradition today. He will pardon the official Thanksgiving turkey during a ceremony at the White House. The two candidates are turkeys from Iowa named Corn and Cobb. Jeopardy! has announced it will continue on with a string of guest hosts after the death of Alex Trebek. The first host will be Ken Jennings. Episodes will begin taping at the end of the month and air in January.
Nominations for the 2021 Grammy Awards will be revealed today. It's happening through our live stream on Grammy.com at 11 this morning. The 63rd Grammy Awards are scheduled to air January 31st. And that is today's 9 at 9. So let me get this straight. David Sears doesn't think that mac and cheese is a traditional Thanksgiving side dish, but his horses are named mac and cheese, right? <laughs> no, they're no? not. Oh, they're mac, not. Mac, mac and what? Taz. Mac and Taz. Oh. I was so close. You were close. You were close. <laughs> we're still going to have mac and cheese for Thanksgiving. Knock yourself out. Okay. I, I wasn't going to, but I am now, David. <laughs> okay, go right ahead. <laughs> and it's safe for our pets, so That's let's right. do it. Right yeah. down the aisle, there's a box of it sitting on the, like, aisle nine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just go ahead and grab some. At some H-E-B, they now have an end cap with Stouffer's mac and cheese. It's the David Sears section. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Outside with live cam, it looks murky out there and rainy. Do we have rain in the area right now, Justin? Uh, we do have a couple showers. Light showers uh, tracking through. Maybe if you're lucky, you did get a little bit of rain this morning. It hasn't added up to much. But what we're hopeful for is Friday and Saturday. It's looking better for some decent rain around here. And we don't want to get too excited just yet. But again, it's looking better and better. 68 degrees right now. There is a little bit of light drizzle coming down at the airport. Dew point is at 65. It's way up there. It is uh, sticky and cloudy this morning. We'll see temperatures make it up to about 80 this afternoon. Skies will clear some, I think, a little bit later today, but at the moment, still pretty uh, dreary and gray out there. There's a look at the radar. You can see these quick moving light showers that are uh, tracking through San Antonio as we speak. So you may have to use windshield wipers if you're going to be out and about uh, for a time this morning. These pass by really quickly. And we talked about those rain chances, uh, a little bit of rain today, and then 40% chance Friday and Saturday. Uh, with a cold front and it will be colder over the weekend too. So some actual changes to the forecast, which is nice to see. We're going to have much more on that coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. And taking a look out with TransGuide this morning, looking at 35 and pine and things are looking fine for now. New this morning at nine comments from a district chief with the San Antonio Fire Department have led him to be suspended for 15 days. That's according to city records released in the case at 12 defenders. Chief Douglas Berry received the suspension in September, ultimately forfeited 80 hours of vacation leave in lieu of serving the suspension. Records show San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood became aware of Berry's quote inappropriate comments earlier this year. City officials declined to describe exactly what Barry said, but some of the comments were made in August of 2018 after Barry was asked to make a job recommendation for a female firefighter. His suspension was for rule violations, which include conduct and behavior, relationships with coworkers, and mutual respect. San Antonio police are searching for five men who they say kicked in the front door of a home and tied up the two people inside before stealing their belongings. It happened just before 2.30 this morning at a home in the 2400 block of Cincinnati on the city's west side. Police tell us the suspects demanded drugs from the victims. What they found none, they stole their money, cell phones, and TV. Right now, investigators are still trying to determine what else may have been stolen and why this home was targeted. Officers say none of the people who live at the home were hurt. Other top stories we're following today. We now know the name of a 66 year old man killed after he was hit by a driver on the south side yesterday evening. Police identified him as Jose Jesus Manzanales. Officers tell us around six last night, Manzanales was trying to cross the street at the intersection of Gillette Boulevard and South Zarzamora when he was hit. A police say the driver initially left the scene but later returned and identified himself as 22 to Harley Damien Del Bosque. He was arrested and is facing a charge of failure to stop and render aid, resulting in death. Police are looking for the person who pulled the trigger on a man riding a bicycle overnight. The 27-year-old victim remains in the hospital this morning in critical condition. Officers were called to the 400 block of Micklejohn Walk, not far from Zarzamora and Culebra, around 1045 last night. Police found the victim with a lot of gunshot wounds. Investigators say two suspects were seen running through a nearby apartment complex shortly after the shooting. Police still don't know why the man was shot. In your morning headlines, another rider gets shoved onto the tracks in the New York subway and police save a woman from her sinking car. And for you Porsche owners or just lovers, you want to see this. It might make you ill. David Sears isn't oh, even kidding yeah. about this one. Oh, wait, do you, wait do you see this. This is, this is sad and... <laughs> Almost kind of funny at the same time. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, I'm going to take your word for that one. Kind of sad. All right, first off, let's meet 29-year-old Ryan Schoner. He's lucky to be alive and walking down the street being interviewed in New York. Here's why. Ryan getting shoved onto the tracks of the New York subway. Fortunately, there wasn't a train coming, so he survived and was able to talk about it. He was actually on a train headed uptown when a homeless man woke up and started screaming at him. He was going to switch cars, but the man followed him and tried to block him. So Schroeder said that uh, he just decided he's going to leave the station, and that's when the man shoved him onto the tracks. I just hope that doesn't happen to somebody who's you know, more elderly or, or somebody who uh, would have a harder time getting off of those tracks. Well, it has happened recently. This is the third time in a week somebody was shoved onto the tracks. Mayor Bill de Blasio said they're going to increase the police presence in high traffic areas and they're going to expand at mental health issues. But he did not go into specifics on that one. All right, how about another hero story courtesy of police officers in Ohio? Once again, you're watching body cam footage. It's kind of shaky, so you got to stay with it here for just a second. They're trying to help rescue a woman and they're trying to stay with it. So this is an SUV in the water. You can see it right there. She landed in the river. There's a female inside by herself. The officers are rushing to her aid and you can see one officer in the water up to his chest. The amazing thing is the air temperature is right at freezing. It's November in Ohio, so you know the water's pretty cold. The officer in the water says he can't breathe. They take a moment. He gathers himself to try to get the doors open, but they're locked. The water keeps rising. And finally, the other officer gets a tomahawk. Here, take this tomahawk. Turn it away. Turn it away. Turn it away. Turn it away. Do it side. again. Other side. There. All right, get out. Get out. Yeah, you can see they broke that rear window and they were able to pull the woman out through the window and get her to dry land. The Alliance Police Department posted the video of the rescue to Facebook. When it works, it was all happening at night, so they had to have flashlights to do all that. Unbelievable. All right, you're with the U.S. Coast Guard, and they are releasing turtles. This is happening off the coast of Florida. They released more than 200 green loggerhead and hawksbill turtles off the coast of Fort Lauderdale. They're all from sea turtle hospitals along the Florida coast. They also had a reminder, if you come upon some sea turtles, you got to give them some space. And if you see one that's injured, you call for some help. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. Just call for some help, and they'll take care of it for you. All right, finally, let's take you overseas to England. That's a Porsche right there, and watch what happens. Oh, 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 oh. over the wall, right in another car. That car that it landed on is a BMW. So we got a Porsche and a BMW. Dude <laughs> spent all his money on the car, about $110,000, and didn't get any driving lessons, apparently. The Porsche had to be towed. The driver was okay. He did have to get some help getting out of the car from some of the neighbors. Remember, they drive on the opposite side over there in England, so he's like laying on the Porsche on the driver's side, so he had to get, cross over the gear shift and get out the passenger side door. He only had the car for five days. Aw, poor guy. Oh, yeah. Poor That's BMW. How would you like to be the neighbor and see, your, see a Porsche landing on your BMW? Oh, that's like, just not good. That's not good. No. <laughs> that's, 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 you kind of you kind of want to laugh at it, don't I you? Do, I do, but I know, also but... it's giving me a migraine. Just <laughs> think of the phone calls and the paperwork yeah. and everything. Yeah. No, I feel oh, bad boy. for you. And the insurance bill. Mm -hmm. Hundred and ten grand for that car. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if it's got a blinker on it. <laughs> well, it wouldn't have helped him there anyway. But it's a fairly new car. It should be full of blinker fluid, <laughs> right, yes. David? You would think. I don't know. I've seen a lot of cars don't use their blinkers. That's true. Thank you, David. <laughs> right now, 911, 68 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. And Dancing with the Stars has crowned a new Mirrorball champion. We're going to hear from the winners and some of the other finalists. Well, many retailers have already released a few Black Friday deals. They Some are rolling out their biggest sales later this week. Tips for you in this week's Money It's Personal. Five more states have legalized marijuana. Will Texas be next? What local state lawmakers have to say after the break. And taking a look at stocks, the Dow up 361 points. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 915. A couple of weeks ago, state lawmakers were able to begin filing bills for the upcoming legislative session. And right away, over a dozen bills were filed regarding cannabis. Our Erica Hernandez spoke to local lawmakers about the bills and the chances of Texas ending marijuana prohibition. After election night on November 3rd, five more states passed marijuana legislation. 11 states now have fully passed it for adults and 34 states have made it legal for medical use. We know that public opinion has shifted dramatically over recent years and 
It's true here in Texas, and the people of Texas are tired of marijuana prohibition. Heather Fazio, the director of Texans for Responsible Marijuana Policy, has been lobbying for years for the expansion of marijuana laws. Currently, the state has the Compassionate Use Act, but it's only for select patients and at small, limited amounts, which local lawmakers say is not enough. There are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who could benefit State Senator Jose Menendez has been pushing for the past five years to expand medical use in the state, and this year is seeing more bipartisan support. We have more and more Republicans joining uh, the, the, the call for expansion of cannabis. Uh, our agriculture commissioner has stated his support for expansion of medical cannabis. But besides the agricultural industry, cannabis could be a huge economic boom for the state, especially when a budget shortfall is expected this year. That is why Senator-elect Roland Gutierrez's pre-filed bill is for full recreational use in the state. To put ourselves in a position where we're creating uh, a product that is grown locally in Texas by Texas farmers, uh, tested in Texas properly. We have an opportunity of creating over 30,000 jobs and $3 billion in revenue. With other issues like redistricting and the pandemic in the forefront of the upcoming 86th session, it will be hard for critics to ignore the expansion of cannabis use in the state. It's my hope that the lieutenant governor, the governor, and others that are like-minded would at least uh, look at the facts, and look at the data that exists, and look what other states have been, been able to uncover over time and realize for themselves. Now, the latest states to pass marijuana use were Arizona, New Jersey, South Dakota, Mississippi, and Montana. We reached out to both Governor Abbott and Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick's office to see what their stance is on this issue. We have yet to hear back. The 86th legislative session begins on January 8th. Mark, Steph. Thank Erica, you. Eric Hernandez, live from home. Thank you, Erica. Yeah, I remember uh, right after the election, Google released their trending results, and the number one topic in New Jersey for days and days and days was marijuana use. Oh, wow. Yeah, because they just passed it. All right. It'll yep. be interesting to see what pans out. Let's see what's happening right now with the weather, and it's uh, it's been fairly uh, moist out there this morning. A little damp. Uh, roads are a little wet in spots. We've had some showers pass through. We actually get to use the radar this morning, something we haven't used in feels like <laughs> weeks. Uh, so that's nice. 68 degrees currently. We've got south southeasterly winds at about eight miles per hour, and you can see some of the drops there on live cam. So yes, it is a little bit wet. And looking at the radar, we're actually seeing a little bit of an increase in shower activity. This is all very light. It's moving very quickly. It's not going to amount to much, but again. You will have some wet roads out there. You may have to use windshield wipers uh, briefly this morning, and uh, we'll probably see a bit more of this over the next couple of hours before clouds generally clear out and we get some sun this afternoon. Here's a look at the visible satellite picture and clouds are pretty extensive here over Bear County. You'll find breaks out west Del Rio Eagle Pass, a few breaks around Catula, also seeing some breaks around Victoria, but everybody else for the most part looking in mostly cloudy to cloudy skies and look at these dew points. This is like spring. Dew points in the 60s and 70s, sticky, a lot of humidity coming in out ahead of our next storm system, which we'll get a front through here by tomorrow morning. Once that happens, basically these dew points fall off a ledge here. We've got dew points in the upper 60s most of today into tonight, but tomorrow morning the dew points fall off into the 30s and 40s, which will be really nice tomorrow. We'll see sunny skies, dry air, so a bit of a change. Our first storm system is right here over the Rockies. And uh, that's what's going to bring that front through tomorrow morning. You can see some snow and rain out ahead of this. Next one, and this is the one that I'm more optimistic about, rainfall wise at least. This is still up near Alaska, but once it uh, moves uh, towards us, it should enhance our rain chances Friday into Saturday. This will also drive a front through and will cool us down quite a bit for the weekend. So let's look at the uh, long range forecast here. There's our front tomorrow morning. I'd say anywhere between four or seven o'clock is when we can expect this. There could be a line of showers with this, although I'm not too confident in that. I'd say rain chances here in San Antonio, 10% or less. Most of Wednesday, sunny skies, beautiful dry, as we mentioned. And then as we get into Thursday, still good for Thanksgiving, but we will see an increase in cloud cover. And then by Friday, Friday morning, the front is on our doorstep, starts to move through. That should bring rain chances with it. And then the question becomes, will those rain chances stick around on Saturday? Still not a lot of agreement in the models, but I think we still have a decent chance on Saturday. Right now, we're going to go with a 40% shot both Friday and Saturday. Some of the best rain chances we've had 
in a long while. Forecast for today, clouds early. We'll see some of those showers early, and then though, we'll start to see some clearing this afternoon. Temperatures up around 80 for a high. And the extended forecast, we go 77 tomorrow and drier. 78 Thursday, 76 on Friday, 40% chance of rain, 40% chance on Saturday. As we mentioned, much, much cooler Saturday and Sunday. Highs in the low 60s. But as of right now, as we mentioned yesterday, Thanksgiving looking really good. Yeah, and the turkey's looking really good. I see that he's exercising he's, today. He's going on a walk, you know, because the <laughs> weather's good, but he might consider running because uh, <laughs> otherwise he could wind up. Yep. Yeah on someone's mm -hmm. plate. Yeah. All right, so that turkey will trot right along. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> yeah. Right now it is 921, 68 degrees. And this back-to-back -back bachelorettes bringing home the glittery mirror ball trophy on Dancing with the Stars. We're going to hear from all the finalists next. <gasps> Caitlin and Artem! <laughs> Former bachelorette Caitlin Bristow and her partner Artem Chigvintsev danced their way to this season's mirror ball trophy, besting 14 other couples to get there. That competition oh. was so tough. I... Uh, there wasn't like one part of me that was like, I think we got it. I was like, I have no idea. The trophy even came engraved. I still cannot believe I'm sitting next to this. I feel like I'm in shock. I keep going in waves of like, I'm crying, I'm laughing. I'm like, I don't know where I am. It comes and goes. Coming in second place, Catfish hosts Neve Shulman and Jenna Johnson. The experience has been such a win as far as I'm concerned. I would love to find new things uh, to do with my career and, and live performance, whether it's musicals or dance or some combination of the two is something that I've always loved. So we'll see. Third place finisher Nelly says he won the prize of new friendships, beginning with his partner Daniela, but going much deeper. Everybody is working together to put on a fantastic season from the runners to the producers to everybody in front and behind the camera, man. And it's just been a great experience. Justina Machado feels the same way. Fourth place with partner Sasha Farber is fantastic. I just love it. It just means so much to me to be here and to have been made it to the finals. I'm I, Listen, we're good. I'm so happy for Caitlin. I'm happy that we were there too. And in the end, new daddy Artem now has a new baby to care for at home. Aggressive and polishing. <laughs> in Los Angeles, George Pinocchio for ABC News. Congratulations. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I only saw like a little clip from, from yesterday, but I didn't get to see the win the trophy. We went to bed early, so. Yes, we did. Right now, 926, 68 degrees. More ahead on TMSA at 9. The Oxford English Dictionary had a hard time picking its traditional word of the year for 2020, I can imagine so. So they picked a dozen instead. David Sears will be back to tell us what they are. An eight-year-old boy from Maryland putting the giving in Thanksgiving, how he's been able to help thousands of people with a nonprofit he created. Thanksgiving week is always one of the busiest for travel, and even though this year health experts are recommending that people stay home, many are traveling anyway. After the break, some tips to stay safe if you do have to get on a plane. Hi, welcome back. It is 930. The CDC warning Americans not to travel for Thanksgiving as the coronavirus pandemic surges all across the U.S. But it seems millions are traveling anyway and airports are busier than they have been in months. CNN's Brian Todd has some tips on how air travelers can reduce their risk of infection. The CDC has recommended that Americans don't do this, cautioning them not to travel for the Thanksgiving holiday. But on Friday and yesterday, more than a million people each day pass through security at America's airports, breaking an air travel record in the U.S. during the pandemic. And the busiest travel days for this holiday haven't even come yet. This is not the time to be flying when there are coronavirus hotspots essentially in every part of the country when there is explosive spread. Many passengers seem to know the risks and are still flying. Honestly, pretty scared of going back home because of Corona. I'm trying to take a lot of precautions, but it's still really terrifying. At some point, it just it's, it's too hard to stay away from family, especially for the holidays. If you feel you have to fly, experts are offering some important advice tonight. If I had to travel, I'd be wearing gloves, a face mask, and a shield. I wouldn't be eating on the plane, and I would do my very best not to have to go to the laboratory. Other advice from the experts we spoke to, keep your mask and face shield on the entire flight. Try to find a seat by a window so you're not close to people walking the aisles. 
Don't sit in rows that have the middle seats filled. Don't touch your face during the flight. Bring your own hand sanitizer and wipes. Wipe down the tray tables, the armrests, your entire seating area. And one expert has some advice about a dangerous period of your flight that many of us may not have thought of. One of the most dangerous times is during the boarding process when everyone is crowded together and when there isn't fresh air being pumped in. And so try to minimize that time standing in the jetway, um, standing while boarding as much as you can. But again, the CDC is saying not to travel and experts are worried about Americans' behavior over Thanksgiving and what comes next. Almost certainly, people are now going to be seeing loved ones. They're going to be staying in someone's home. They might be having dinner together. And remember that people are coming from all over the country where there are coronavirus hotspots everywhere. I'm afraid that two or three weeks after Thanksgiving and then again after Christmas, uh, we're going to be seeing spike upon spike. This is a very difficult time for all of us. And that was CNN's Brian Todd reporting. Public health experts point out that it is important to recognize that planes and airports are not the only high-risk areas. They advise being careful when using ground transportation during the holidays, such as shuttles, trains, taxis, and ride chairs. If you do take a taxi or Uber to or from the airport, they recommend opening the windows. And taking a look out with live cam here, 68 degrees, can't see much through that camera right now. Now we got some driving drizzle underway here with, uh, we could pick up a hundredth of an inch with some of the slight rain that's coming through. We are seeing some actual showers too on the radar. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, the pollen count is in, mold is low, surprisingly still at 390. Uh, we've got a series of cold fronts, though, headed our way, so we'll see how that changes allergens going forward, but we're still in good shape. There's a look at the radar and satellite. You see the cloud cover is pretty expansive, but we've also got shower activity showing up on radar tracking through San Antonio right now. So most of the roads are wet. You want to you want to grab your umbrellas. You head out the door right now. None of this is very heavy, but it is there and it's going to be damp for another couple of hours. 64 degrees, Bernie State, 68, Randolph, 66, Stinson, 70 at Hondo. It's a warm, humid morning, and the forecast plays out like this. We'll see the, the drizzle of the showers through about the lunch hour, and then things should start to clear out a little bit as we get into the afternoon. Temperature up around 80 for a high today. A lot to look at in that 70 forecast. We're going to get to that second front coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Black Friday deals have been phased in throughout the month to allow for social distancing due to the pandemic, but some retailers are still holding their biggest sale of the year this Friday. Ivan Herrera has some tips on how to keep safe on Black Friday in this week's Money It's Personal. Black Friday is drawing closer and you're not the only one looking to save some money. The National Retail Federation says people are predicted to spend a little under $1,000 on gifts this holiday season. The Better Business Bureau is offering some tips for those who plan on shopping during this Black Friday. The first tip is the most important for staying safe against COVID-19. Make sure to follow CDC guidelines. That means frequent hand washing, wearing a face covering, keeping six feet of distance between you and others at the store and staying at home if you're sick. Next, when you're planning your Black Friday spending, set a budget and use sales flyers to find the best deals. You'll also want to do a deep dive on reviews for the items you want to ensure you're getting your money's worth. Make sure to read the fine print on those sales advertisements. Some items may have inflated original prices, so it's best to do your research before heading out to the store. And some retailers may only offer a sale at a certain time. So plan out which stores you're going to visit first for the best deals. You could also sign up for email lists or even bigger discounts at checkout. Lastly, be familiar with return policies and warranty information and pass that information along if you're gifting anything you buy this Black Friday. Gift receipts make it easier for someone to exchange or return the gift if it's not the right fit or it malfunctions. For this week's Money It's Personal, I'm Ivan Herrera, KSAT 12 News. And for the word of the year, it is 2020, so you just can't pick one. And the reindeer are ready to deliver gifts. Baby Yoda now has its own cookie. David Sears yeah. is back with some consumer news. David. Yeah, you know, words not easy to choose these days, especially since it's 2020, right? Yeah. So how tough of a year has it been? The Oxford Dictionary 
struggled to come up with just one word of the year. So it being 2020, they came up with several words, one for just about every month. January bush fire. Remember Australia hit home for the Spurs, Patty Mills. February acquittal when the impeachment trial of President Trump ended. March into summer, there's coronavirus terms, COVID-19, lockdown, social distancing, reopening, June, Black Lives Matter. Then there was mail-in and moonshot, the name for coronavirus testing in the UK, that's what moonshot was. And then October, there was net zero and super spreader. We don't have November's yet or December's, but you can only imagine probably <laughs> non-travel and... We're familiar with most of those. You know, so. yeah. yeah, it's been a year. Yeah, it, it, it has been a year, that's for <laughs> sure. All right, if you're a craft beer lover, this is a great Christmas gift. Breckenridge Brewery giving away many kegs of its Christmas brew. There will be 10 winners, and the kegs will be delivered to your house by actual reindeer. You can take selfies. You can feed the deer. There is a catch. You have to register on their website and live in Denver or Cascade, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you know somebody who lives there, and you can call them and say, hey, register, and then you can invite me over like sometime next year when we can travel. Which reindeer? Blitzen? I don't know. Who? Comet. Do we know? Um, Comet. Comet. Okay. No, yeah. Rudolph. I'm not sure Rudolph will be delivering beer. <laughs> well, he's the responsible one at like, the at the front with, with the light. Hey, somebody's got to drive. He's, right. a he's above driver, beer, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. He would be the one. Hey, Baby Yoda craze. Remember, Baby Yoda's actually hanging out at the International Space Station. Took off, What? remember? Mm -hmm. like, was it last week or over yeah. the weekend? Yeah, we do remember that. Took off. All right, and in honor of the trip, Williams Sonoma is offering a new moneymaker. Navarro Nummy is what they call. They're actually space macaroons, inspired by a scene from season two of The Mandalorian when Baby Yoda was using the force to steal cookies. Oh, Aww. come on. They're officially licensed French style macaroons, creamy rich vanilla. I'll repeat that creamy rich vanilla filling. And when we say rich, we mean rich. Guess how much? Just go, ah, you see it. Don't look. This, this, well, this, I, what would you I say? already we, looked. We already heard. Yeah, we, oh, knew. we already heard. I'm going to quit writing that stuff on there. $50, yeah. $50 a dozen. That's a lot. For a cookie. But they're going to sell out. Somebody's oh, going to know they will. Yes, they're absolutely going to sell out. I, you get you some craft beer and a macaroon from Yoda. Well, I was going to say, if it came Merry with Christmas. a little a little baby Yoda on the side, that would be worth it. Mm -hmm. But it's just the cookies. Just the cookie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Good luck with that. Hey, nobody's turning down snacks this week, David Sears. Thank you very much. Right <laughs> now, you. it's uh, 939, 68 degrees. You're walking GMSA at 9. And last week, we told you about the Smithsonian's National Zoo asking people to vote on the name of its giant panda cub. The results are now in. We're going to reveal the name next. A GMSA at 9 update for you this morning. The votes are in, and the giant panda cub at Smithsonian's National Zoo officially has a name. The three month old cub will be named Xiao Chi Ji, which translates to Little Miracle. And just under 135,000 people voted in the poll. And that's what we voted for. You, that's the one you. Yeah. Voted. I think we did both. I mm -hmm. know you wanted that one. I wanted that one. We and you usually did. get what you want, so. So then. <laughs> So you were, on, you were on board then, you of course. A, I was, but you have a lot of pull in the panda department. Mm. Hey, a boy in Maryland just turned eight years old on Friday, and while most second graders might focus on the gifts they get for their birthday, Kavanaugh Bell is giving to others instead. As ABC's Will Gans reports, he created his own food pantry. Guys, we had 16 turkeys, but someone donated to us. Meet Kavanaugh Bell, an eight-year-old, putting the giving into Thanksgiving this season. Although social justice has been a passion of Kavanaugh's since pre-K. Kids started booing me, me because I didn't look like any of the other kids in the class. After visiting his local city council in Maryland and helping establish a bullying prevention month, Kavanaugh pivoted his charitable efforts when COVID-19 struck earlier this year. Since the pandemic hit, I use, in March, I use my... Life savings, which was $640 to make 72 care packs for my grandma and the senior citizens that live in her senior citizens facility. That's when folks began to notice the work that Kavanaugh was doing and donations began to pour in. Kav and his family setting up a community kitchen. And from April 4th to today, I've almost been able to help 9,000 people, but not just in my community. Kavanaugh organizing two separate tractor trailer trips from his community pantry all the way to the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. Wake up! This is serious! 
I need your help to help others. And Cap says he's only getting started. It's kind of my thing, so I just like doing it. And every time I do it, it makes me happy, so I just keep doing it. So much so that Kavanaugh and his mom set up a nonprofit called Cool and Dope. You don't know what's going on in other people's lives, so just stay positive and dish out big, a big amount of positive energy. So, yeah. Kavanaugh told me he wants to be a football player, a mayor, or a police officer when he grows up. For more information on Cav and to find out how to help, check him out at coolanddope.com. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Uh, we've not heard the last of Kavanaugh Bell. Oh my goodness, no, how admirable. Uh, he said he's been able to help, I looked again, 9,000 people and not just in his community. That is so cool. I just realized also we're raising a whole generation of, of kids who are so charismatic yes. on Zoom calls. I mean, this is how they <laughs> communicate with everybody now, but I mean, he just jumps through the screen, doesn't yeah, he? he? Yeah, he really does. Yeah, yeah. very impressed with Will, Kavanaugh. Will should have just gone home and let the kids talk. <laughs> And just take over the story, which he kind of did. He kind of so, did. Yeah. That's cool. Great job, Kavanaugh. Yeah. Bell. 946, Justin's back, and he's got radar up, and you're surprised that we're seeing so much stuff. Mm -hmm. It's it's active right now. It's not heavy rain, but it's light rain. It's light drizzle. It's uh, coming down at a, a decent rate, I suppose. We've only picked up about a hundredth of an inch at the airport, but we can see a little bit more as we go throughout the course of the next hour. So look at the radar there over San Antonio. It is wet. And uh, if you're walking out the door right now, an umbrella would be a good thing to have with you. The roads are going to be a little bit wet, a little bit slick for the next couple of hours. I think once this batch moves through, we should see things quiet down a little bit. And uh, eventually later this afternoon, we may see some sun. But in the meantime, lots of clouds, lots of humidity, and some of those showers moving through. This is out ahead of our next storm system, which right now is still back out to the west. But it'll push a front through tomorrow morning, and that will take away all the moisture, and we'll get some drier air. In here, let's take a look at the rainfall so far this year. 18.42. We're going to get to add to that a little bit this morning, but we're closing in on 12 inches below the average. So it has been a rough year for us. Take a look at the time lapse. A lot of cloud cover. We had a little bit of fog here and there this morning, but mostly it's been in the form of drizzle and some of those light showers. 69 degrees at the airport right now. Southerly winds at about 10 miles per hour. And dew point is way up there at 66. The dew point will stay elevated today, close to 70. It's going to stay sticky through the afternoon. And then by tomorrow morning, when we get our front, it just falls off the ledge there. Dew points will fall down into the 30s. Wednesday is going to be very dry and sunny, so it'll be a big change tomorrow. Here's the setup. Here's our upper level low here, and that's what's going to drive the front through. Out ahead of it, though, we're seeing good moisture surging up into South Texas, and that's why we're seeing some of the drizzle this morning. So that's system number one. Behind that, system number two, it's back out near Alaska, but it's getting a little bit closer uh, to the United States mainland here. And once it moves in, we'll have a better idea of what it will bring us. There's still some questions here, but we think that rain chances are going to be pretty good Friday into Saturday. And it's also going to bring a front through, which will cool us down for the weekend. So let's take a look at the forecast here. Here is our first front, and I think it'll be sometime tomorrow morning between 4, 7 o'clock, probably pre-dawn. With it, can't rule out a shower or two right along the front, but rain chances are really pretty low. Wednesday, as we talked about, clear skies. Clouds will increase on Thursday. No rain for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving looks good, generally speaking, but we will see a little bit more cloud cover. And then as we get into Friday, the front's on our doorstep Friday morning. Then we'll start to see some rain pushing into the area along the front. It will turn cooler as we get into Saturday. And the question is, will that rain hang around for Saturday? At the moment, looks like it may. We could see some decent rainfall totals out of this. So this is the encouraging part. But there's still some questions there. And we'll certainly uh, answer those questions and refine that forecast as we get a little bit closer. 80 degrees today. Southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll look for some showers early. 20% chance over the next a few hours with uh, some drizzle still there, and then we'll get some clearing later this afternoon. 10% chances that front moves through tomorrow morning, 77 tomorrow, 78 Thursday, 76 Friday, 40% chance, and right now 40% chance on Saturday and cooler. But if those models can come into better agreement, maybe we'll get to raise those rain chances on Saturday. We'll keep our fingers crossed. But in the meantime, guys, it's wet out there right now. Uh, be prepared for some wet roads. We will. We'll be careful. And that turkey is making his way out. Sure is. It's like, I'm out of here. I'm out. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Yep. 949, 69 degrees. We'll be right back.
Well, here we are more than halfway through No Shave November, and this is all I got to show you guys so far. And although it's not a lot, I felt there was no better time to get involved and join my KSAT family in hopes of finding a cure for men's cancer. As we all know, cancer impacts millions of families across the country, and my family's no different. In 2018, we lost my Theo Hector to cancer. It was a battle he fought most of his adult life. And although it was a devastating loss for my family, if there's one thing that we learned from all of this, is to hold on to hope that one day we will find a cure. And if 2020 has taught us all anything, is that we're stronger together. So let's all do our part. No Shave November continues. Team KSAT now approaching $7,000 in donations and is now in easily the top 10 in the country. Yes, congrats. For organizations raising money for the fight against cancer. So keep those donations coming uh, through next Monday. Uh, more on KSAT.com. I've also put a link to several of our team members on there that are raising money today. I've featured RJ and Officer Nick Solis. Look for KSAT Mark Austin on Facebook. Good morning. Hey guys. Coming up on live, we'll chat with Hugh Grant from The Undoing. Plus we got the winner and runner up from Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Coming up on live. <laughs> And coming up tomorrow on GMSA at 9, Katie Blake is turning a favorite Thanksgiving side into a fun learning experience about shapes. So Katie's Science Lab is all about cranberry geometry, and you only need two ingredients here, cranberries, fresh or thawed if frozen, and some toothpicks. So join us for Katie's Science Lab tomorrow at 9. Now let's check the radar one last time. We got rain moving through San Antonio. This is light rain, but it is uh, causing some issues on the roadways out there, so be careful. This should shift through, and then we're expecting some clearing later this afternoon, guys. All right, the drive-in at Fiesta, Texas, otherwise known as Rooftop Cinema Club, has released their holiday classics list through the end of the year. So starting November 27th, mm -hmm. all the way through December 30th, they're playing a number of movies. Some of them have holiday themes. Some of them are questionably holiday related. <laughs> yes, we've been discussing this all morning, but yeah, they're starting strong with Elf. Then they've got the Beetleju mm -hmm. Beetlejuice and then Polar Express Christmas Vacation, but then a bunch of other ones like uh, Iron Man 3, which of course is a holiday classic right up there with It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> <laughs> or how about my favorite holiday movie, The Shining? <laughs> the Shining. <laughs> what? Yes, but it did snow. Oh, also included in there is, is a true American uh, holiday classic, mm -hmm. Die Hard, on December 17th. <laughs> well, it takes place on Christmas. Right. And, and I was telling Justin, where's Gremlins? Because I think that took place on Christmas. It did. Christmas. Close enough, mm -hmm. though, the Grinch is on there. So you oh, were, okay. you were very close. Uh, you can bring food from home for this and order concessions. Prices are $24 to $32 per vehicle, depending on the parking spot you pick. And everything, of course, is spread out, socially distanced, and those parking spaces at the rooftop cinema at Fiesta, Texas. First come, first serve. There is a discount if you show military ID uh, online. You have to yeah. do that online. You have to, yeah, pre-register. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so December 30th, though, Minions ends on mm -hmm. a powerful note Another as well. Another big Christmas movie, right? <laughs> Bye, guys.